Liberia is our only home. Liberia is our only home. We cannot sit and watch Liberia die. Liberia is our home. Liberia is our home. The only home we know. Let's fight to bring it back. Take it from the rocks. Take it from the thieves. Let us punish them. Liberia is our home. Liberia is our home. All you patriots rise. The time has come to end. The massive stealing of our wealth. Rise, O oh, patriots. Rise, my patriots. Time to get our nation back. Liberia is our only home. We cannot sit and watch Liberia die. Liberia is our home, the only home we have. Rise up, patriots. Rise up, loyalists. Commander Chessing is calling the order of the day. Liberia is our home, the only home we know. Liberia cannot die. We owe it to our parents. We owe it to our elders. We owe it to the ancients. We owe it to our parents. Liberia cannot die. Rise up, O oh patriots. Rise up, O oh loyalists. Liberia is our home. The only home we have. Fight, fight for Liberia. Fight, fight for our freedom. Fight, fight to free Liberia. Liberia is our home. The only home we ever know. Liberia is our pride. The inheritance we have. Rise, patriots. Rise, loyalists. Rise, Liberians. Follow Commander Chesson. Follow Commander. Follow Commander Chesson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women. Welcome to a Tony Commander J.R. Kupukwa Chesson Talk Show. Today is June the 8th. What surprises do we have for this day? What surprises do we have in our country here and in Liberia? Every day, there's something new coming up. Every day, we are confronted with discouraging news, especially in Malay country, Liberia. We've lost control of our lives. We lost control of our country. We lost control of the leadership of our people. What is there for us in Liberia? today. We see our president, George Manawea, is traveling throughout the nation. He's in Lofa County now. We hear all these discouraging news coming out of Lofa County. Yeah, we know people are jubilant because the president is there. Everybody want to see their president. George Manawea is not only a president for Liberia, he is a superstar of the world. 
so our people want to see him. Why should people in Monrovia have the privilege of seeing their president who is a soccer star and not the whole nation? So just by being a superstar representing Liberia all over the world, George Weah has a right to be with people to travel all through Liberia. But our politics has become so terrible that people are dying more and more every day. We don't hear about it in the news. We don't see all the people who are being killed because they're now all being killed in Monrovia. You all heard Jerome Verdere of the TRC speaking on Spoon TV the other day of how people, groups of people are being killed and dumped in the ocean and their bodies will wash up on shore sooner or later. We hear all the discouraging news of the massive killings throughout our country. Now we see our country in this state of disarray. What is our fate? What is our destiny? What are the possibilities that the future of Liberia and Liberians will change anytime soon? We can't go on like this. We can't go on living like this. And this is a big, big problem for our country. And it's coming to America too. But I will not get into America right now because Liberia is so terrible. I need to spend more time on that useless country. And I don't talk about other African countries now because if my house is not clean up, how in the hell I'll go clean up other people's houses? Charity begins at home. That's why I watch all the Africans coming up say they're talking for Africa. Yes, let's talk for Africa. But all of us got intellects in every country in Africa. Why would I forget about my useless country and criminal keys leading our country in our judiciary, in our legislature, in our executive, no man in our country to challenge the stealing that go on there? Why would I leave my country to go speak for any other country? I gotta move the coal out of my eyes before I can look at the coal in other people's eyes or in the world's eyes. How will you die for Africa? You can't die for your own country first. Hmm? And your country is a part of Africa, and your country is screwed up. The mentality of your people is screwed up. So why are you fighting for Africa? When your own people are trying to kill you and the other people are trying to kill you, what chances do you have? It's chilly out here. You know, it's a cool morning. Sometimes it's this wind just come out of nowhere, it hits you. But this is the situation. So let me put on my topic. Let us deal with it this morning. Today's topics, in the army of the Lord, celebrating Henry Costa. And three, the review. My first topic for this morning is in the army of the Lord. What does that mean? All the people that are leading our country today have some sense of religious guidance. Either Muslim, Christians, enemies, our juju and all of that, those are enemies, religion, because people worship trees, people worship shrines, inanimate objects. 
So all those things make up our country, our leaders, the ideals, the religion, the gods, all those things make up our country. But our country has been dominated by Christianity. Why? Because the founding of the fathers of Liberia, the Christians, because the people that help us build our nation are Christians, are supposedly Christians. And the masses of our people today profess to be Christians, despite the fact we have other religions in our midst. But we are Christians because of the efforts of our forefathers. And our Christianity has brought us to this point thus far. Why? Because our country has been based on Christian principles. And we keep talking this time and time again. Love thy God. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Those are the founding principles of our country. Whether you Muslim, you atheist, you, you animist, it doesn't matter what you are. That's the foundation of our country. People say we're not Christian nation. That's true. We are a circular nation, but we are guided by principles that unify us and promote real peace and stability in our country. And no other law, no other philosophy, no other doctrine is greater than the two teachings of Christianity. And whether you are Muslim, Look at Farrakhan in America today. They all claim to be Muslim, but they talk about Jesus Christ more than any Muslim, even more than Muhammad. Because the Bible, you know, the Quran forbids the teaching of Christ. No, none of them condemn him as a holy man. Christians take him to be the holy man. Other people can take him to be a holy man. That's their business. But they still acknowledge that Jesus Christ is a holy man. Their confusion is his birth. Whether it, it was immaculate or a man and all of that. And if you are a living person who has experienced life, you know that there are certain things in life that we cannot explain. There are things in life we can explain. People get healed, they can't explain it. People get delivered, they can't explain it. So if you can't understand these mysterious things in our lives that we deal with every day, why you can't understand? When you said Jesus' birth was and is immaculate. Look at all the things of the world. People were supposed to die from cancer today. Some of them still living 20 years afterwards. 10 years, 5 years, 6 years. The doctors can't explain it. Nobody can explain it. They're giving up on them, but they're still living. They still going along doing things, great things. How do you explain that? You can't. And that's why I don't like to deal into this spiritualism too much. Because you can't win. There's no way you can win. Only God wins. And no matter how you try to break it down, we we'll lose. And when we lose these things, we lose our country. And that is why right now, the whole social fabric of Liberia is broken down. It's broken down. The family, the church, the community, everything is broken down. And we're looking for leadership 
somewhere where we can't find it. When leadership has always been with us in our midst, why we can't find leadership? Because we're searching in the wrong places. We're searching in the wrong places. And that's why we have to overhaul our country. Because our country is totally broken down. Every system in Liberia is broken down. The family, and especially the family. When the family is broken down, the society cannot exist without the family. You have individuals with money. Yeah, one or two children, three children. That's not the concept of our commun communal living. That's not the concept. Our concept is based on extended family. Our concept is based on communal living. Our concept is based on understanding that in the greatest picture of things, we are a greater family. We are a nation of Liberian people. And if the word like the name Liberian confuses you, all, if the name Liberian is too foreign for us, then we gotta cut it off. If we, if we can't deal with the word Liberian, 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 it sounds good, but it's not part of us. We need Wugadugu, we need Dagada. Cut the Liberian name off. And let's set up a commission to find an African name for our country. Y'all want to call Morovia Duco? We can go back to call him Morovia Duco. If that way eliminate all this confusion among us, eliminate all the greed and identity problems among us, let's get rid of the Western name. That get rid of it completely. It not happen me either. The Western name in America not helping me. My name Chesson, what is this doing for me in this country? Nothing. Nothing. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words cannot hurt me. We'll change the name of Liberia. We'll change the name of Monrovia. We'll get our own name. Because it is divine. We, we are not a land of liberty. We cannot adopt an Italian name for our country, Libra. No, we got our own word of freedom in Africa. Jimunga, Una Nunu, Tika, Togo, Luanda, Tata, Go, Koka, Kata. That our way. Our country cannot be called Iberia no more. That's a Latin name. And we are not Latin people. Monrovia is the name that's not for us. We don't hate our African American brothers and sisters. We appreciate you. We love you. But we cannot be Liberia no more. I tell you with Liberia. That, that's a slave name. Monrovia, that's a slave name. Because we're not getting the respect we deserve in America nor in Liberia. We're not getting no damn respect here. We're not getting no damn respect in our country. So why? Are we identifying ourselves with a name that is from Italy? With a name that is Latin? With a name that has no African connotation? It's time for us to free ourselves. It's time for us to relinquish ourselves as this Italian name called Liberia. It is not an African name for freedom. No. We cannot be a country with an Italian name. No, we cannot. We cannot have a capital city named after a president who was a slave owner and a president who perpetuated racism against my people. No, no, no. We got to change our name. We got to change our city. Y'all won't go back to Duco. We'll go back to Duco. But you gotta find a name now. We got 16 tribal people 
tribe of people who got to sit down, set up a commission. Just how we found our flag and our national anthem, we got to find a name for our country. I tie with Liberia. I tie with Liberia. I tie, tie, tie. It doesn't represent my country and my people. My people, it doesn't represent us. So it behooves us to set standards for ourselves. Because I've traveled from here to the end of North America. And all the way I went to the, I go to the Caribbean. Nobody have African name. They love the African people. Yes, one or two Jamaican people know their African roots. But the rest of them do know nothing about Africa. They have no concept about Africa. All that African roots, roots, roots thing, it, does, it doesn't surpass the money. Because the white people can't pronounce our name, so you got to give them a name they can pronounce. Kati, Shalingwa. Sri Lanka, in Uganda. When you go down the Caribbean, now all you hear, you hear no African names. People making up names and people doing things. It, it hit me. That's a Liberian when I was sitting in Mexico. And Mexicans coming up to me, calling themselves king. And I was like, in the Caribbean. Social American names, made up names and things like that. I didn't hear African names. That's when my heart broke. My wife and I was sitting there eating and when it, it hit me, I said, damn it. We are not ourselves. We are not. We hate ourselves. Or we betray ourselves for money. A wealth of foreigners, it can't go on. No, 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 no. Not on the Tony Commander GR Kupuk by I am in the army of the Lord. And I can't see my people submitting to the international community and losing our sovereignty as a world nation. No, 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 no. It's not right. So, as a soldier in the army of the Lord, I have to stand up for truth and justice. And no matter where the chips may fall, it's truth and justice. And there's nothing else for my people. We come too far. The struggle has been too hard. We have endured it for 400, 200, 300 years. Why does it matter? We used to eat now. But the Tony Commander G.R. Kupu Pachesi serves in the army of the Lord. And if things not right, Things not truth. Things not fair. For God's people, somebody gotta talk. It doesn't matter whether you're Liberian, Chinese, Japanese. We are God's people. And somebody gotta talk. International community does not control my country nor my people. If international community is corrupt and a failure, to the world, they gotta know it. We need help. There's no doubt about it. But our country is a sovereign nation. We need leaders in our country. That know the plight of our country and people. Not that they dummies running around with guns 
and trying to kill us and put us back into the 1980s and 1960s, being supported by foreigners with millions and millions of dollars that can't get to our people. Enough is enough. The time of the Liberian people is now. Are you in the army of the Lord? If not, step aside. Step aside. We have no time for you. Bury the dead. We got work to do in this new Liberian dispensation. The time of the true Liberian people revolution is now. Let me take a break and start with my second topic. My second topic, celebrating with Henry Castor. Now, Henry Castor is a young Liberian who has set a landmark for himself in the Liberian society. He is one of the leading advocates for change in Liberia. He and his council of patriots may not be a political organization. They may be a pressure group. They may be an interest group, a patriotic alliance, whatever they may be. Henry Castle has brought this group together he has maintained it. They have formed branches in Europe, in America, in Liberia. And this is outstanding. 
whether we like it or not, we cannot dismiss the influence of Henry Castor and the COP in Liberian society. And it is good that we have a young man like this, an organization that sets principles for Liberian people, that set guidance of leadership and direction for its members. And although not an organization with government governmental links, they are affiliated with the CO, CPP, the opposition party. So this is a group that is for change. It's an opposition to the current government that is corrupt, that is murderous, that is inhumane, and that needs to be removed. It's up to the Liberian people. How you remove your government, you can do it through protests and demand that this man step down now and shut Liberia down. Our army can take a stand that is necessary this day and age for a government that honors no rule of law, that honors no human decency, that is a criminal element among the Liberian people, ripping our country and people off of the necessities that we have for ourselves to raise the level and consciousness of our people. Every leader come in our country just steal, steal, steal. Look at Ellen Johnson Sallif. The woman we depended on to bring us hope. To come in with our knowledge and wisdom and change our country. The education was nothing for her. The education meant nothing to her. The ways of her fathers and mothers were more prevalent in her view than using her education and knowledge to change Liberia. And you see, this is the problem with me time and time again. This is the problem with me time and time again. Because we get all this knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and it means nothing to us because we want to do the same things our fathers did. We think that the same things our father and mothers did would be the same thing to bring us success in leading our country time and time again. And it can't happen. It can't happen. Because of the days of our father and mother were the dark days of our people. And they sent us to school to learn, to become wise and educated, so we do not follow their paths. We take the goods from them, and we ditch the bad. And we create a new system for our people based on our own knowledge and understanding and wisdom and unification and solidarity and leadership. All of that comes from our own will. That was in the, even in the Bible when Solomon died and they came to his son and they said, your father dead now. No, the elders came to him and told him and said, your father dead now. You can't have the same enemies as your father. You can't tread the same line as your father. You got to be your own leader. You got to rise to the state to change your people, to unify them. Your father time was your father time. This is your time. What you gonna do in your time? Your father sent you to school to become more educated, more advanced. This is your time. What you gonna do? Be like your father or be like the man your father sent you to school to be. And that's where me and my family have a problem. 
time and time again because I cannot go to school to learn better and come and behave just as my parents. No. No. It can't be. I'm a new generation. The only way I would be like my father if I didn't learn. If I just stayed home and was a little pet to my father and my mother, and didn't venture out in the world to see for myself, to learn for myself. And that would make extraordinary leaders. Because to be a leader of a people, you got to have a different knowledge than just everybody else. And that knowledge doesn't only come from the classroom. It comes from dealing with people in the world, understanding the price of people, being conscious in your mind to think not only of yourself, but study your environment and know that if the people around you don't grow, you on your own. If you know and you cannot lift the minds of the people around you, you are in danger. If you know and see that your people around you lack knowledge and wisdom and lighting, enlightenment and light and brightness, you are in danger. You cannot be in the light in the middle of darkness. The darkness will consume you sooner or later. So it's good that even in our darkest hours in Liberia today, we have a few people coming up and standing up and putting on the light and say, I will not turn it off. I will spread the light. And this is where people like Costa come in. Because not only is he doing it in words, he's doing it in deeds. They're raising big money. They're doing the good things. And that Costa group, they're not a political group. They call him leader. They can call him anything they want to call him. That is group. They're loyal to him. He has proven that he can do things to lift their lives. And it is evident. I saw it when they bought a hundred bags of rice and distributed it with the mass to two other miles for Ramanda. That was tremendous. They participated in a religious ceremony on the Muslims. They're not only a Christian group. And this is what we want in our society because it proves that we have a greater family connection than just money and property and fighting for self aggrandizement No. That demonstrates true leadership. Everything is not people giving you, giving you, giving you, giving you. They give you so you can understand how to plan to give back to them. Because you went to school, you got the knowledge, you got the wisdom. And that proves right now that Henry Costa is enlightened. His degree is a demonstration of himself. Not what he learned, but what it has made him. What it has turned him into. And we can see it. He's a community leader. He's a community servant. Yes, he talks about politics and things, but he takes care of his people. He takes care of Liberian people. All the rights he gave to the Moors, they were not politicians. He didn't say who were voting for Casa. He didn't say who all would donate to Casa. No. They divided the rights. They sent this to this mosque, sent it to that mosque, and selected a mosque. And the Muslims appreciated that. 
the caliphs came and then cast them in the COP. And this is why I want us to celebrate with Henry Castle. Not so much because of George Ria and Castle, no. But because he's a community man. His ideals are beyond politics, are beyond voting, are beyond one group of people. When you see people do things like that, those things don't happen in our society. How many of our leaders going out and buying things for the people, raising money, encouraging people to change their lives, creating a new sense of leadership amongst the people they're leading. These are things that we have to be mindful of. I thought this, these digital things are supposed to change the background and control the lights and all of that, but I see mine don't do it so well, so maybe when you start sending me some money, I can buy some new equipment and things, everything just advancing and advancing, technology advancing. And I do my show whether I get donation or not because this is my calling. People don't gotta give me money to do this thing. Jesus Christ got me doing it. So money is not an issue. I get up and do it with our money and the money comes. Because whether you come from the people I'm serving or from the ways and doors that Jesus Christ opens for me to get money to do what I want to do, I'm doing it. I'm happy. Whether I'm raising money or not, once the doors are being opened for me to do what I want to do with a way of money, I do it. Because this thing is a divine calling for me to wake up six o'clock to do this thing. Out of my own volition. Out of the need for my people to change and live and grow and survive and see the world as it really is. That's my sacrifice. For my people, for my children. For my picking in. And I don't care. You see, that's why I don't do things for people. I do things for me. Because I'm a street kid. I'm coming to impress anybody that was born work. Several spoon years. I came from that people. But that people didn't see me like that. But I had the opportunity to, to accept through my knowledge and education. And I was blessed to know that the people who were my people and could afford to give me knowledge and education, I can't waste it. And I was blessed to have a mother who raised me and told me that education was my key, that if I wanted my freedom, get my education. And that wasn't things that came from my parents. No. It came from my other parents. So you see, I didn't waste time with the parents I had. I learned from them. I learned whether it was good, whether it was bad, I learned. And that's why a fight for my own accomplishment. I don't care about what people say. If I got to pay the buys them 10 times to be proficient in the law, I will do it. I'm beholden to nobody. Nobody ever took my hands and said, Chesson, I will give you knowledge. I will put it in your head. No. 
Nobody ever got up and told me, Chelsea, I will teach you how to be a community leader. I will teach you how to lead people and how to do things. Nobody ever taught me. But I'm doing I don't have to have a million people behind me, but I do it because it's got to be done. I don't have to have 10 million people. My voice will be out there. My handwriting will be out there. When I visit these shows, I don't call in. Why would I call in when I have the ability to write and my people read and don't, don't have to hear my voice? I got my own show. When it's time to come, I come on my show. You want to hear what I got to say extensively, visit my show. But when I visit other people's show, why call it info? When I can write. When I can communicate just as fast as you're talking. And I don't owe anybody. You want to read it, read it. You will not want to read it, skip it. So, this is why I want to celebrate with Henry Carson. He made a great effort to go back to school. And I know from my friends, when you get used to making money and doing things, to go back to school is hard. It's hard because it's a challenge. It's a challenge. What are you willing to sacrifice to go back to school? What are you willing to sacrifice to go get your degree? Because when you play with big money, some people think they made it. Why do I have to go to school? I'm making the money. I'm leading people. But now Henry Costa can sit down and talk like a real man now. Because he got a people. And to get that people not easy. Now people tell you, just get that people, man. Just get that people. They don't mean go, go make happy. Go buy people degree to make happy. No. They mean get out there and use your own mind and go to school and struggle. Be a hustler and get that paper. Get that paper from a good school. They got many good schools in Liberia. Yes, they got some school you gotta pay to get your degree and team from the teachers and things like that. But they got better schools than that. And it behooves you if you go to any school to learn. Because despite the fact that the teachers are corrupt and demand money and things, some of them do go and teach. But the still children don't pay attention. The children don't want to learn. The children won't go party and know they can come and pay the teacher to get a grade. So if the system is corrupt, the teacher will not fear students. They not, we will not deliberately fear students. The good students will get the grade and pass. But it's the wayward students that want to party and do everything and come and bribe the teacher and get a free grade that we are concerned about. That we have to watch the teachers about. Because if you get through our school by paying our teachers, it doesn't serve you nor our community. If you go to school and pass, even with a C, that doesn't mean that you're a failure. You pass, you go. That's why in the army they don't deal with grade and all of that. They deal with go or no go. Because we're not grading you on proficiency or being, or being an A student. No. 
we are giving enough knowledge to know how to get by in life. To know when you got a job, you got to finish it. To know responsibility. To know discipline. So we, we don't care whether you A or B or C. We just want you to pass. You know that the limit is C. You can't go below C. If you go below C, then you go down to the failing grades. Once you from C up, you are go. And it doesn't matter whether you're the top of the class or the bottom of the class. You are material that can trans be, be transformed or be made to conform to certain standards, to certain abilities, capabilities. And once you can form, conform to those standards, you are go. You have the mentality to excel, to change your life. So all of us don't have to be geniuses. All of us don't have to be cum laude or magnum. No, all of us can just gotta pass, go. And when you pass and go, don't bribe your teacher. Don't use sex for your life. Try and get that C. That all you need. That all you need. College is hard. Formal education is hard. It's not easy. But when you get that first degree, if you have the ability and the desire to want more, you will be able to get more. You will be able to set standards for yourself because you know your limitation. You know your abilities. You know what you can do. And this is what Henry Costa has brought to the table in the Liberian society. He knows his limits. He knows to excel as a leader, you need education. You cannot just depend on your own abilities. You need to excel in your mind to mix with people, to talk with a man like me and understand where I'm coming from. Because when I'm talking, I'm not talking your language. I'm talking the language of civilized people, the language of the world. So if you cannot understand what I'm talking to you, as simple as I'm talking to you, there's no mystery in what I'm saying. But if you don't have the level of understanding what I'm saying to you, you are lost to what I'm telling you. Because you have not reached the level or even a high school student. Because I'm speaking to students in high school. I'm speaking to elementary students too, but they, not, they cannot grasp what I'm saying to them because they're too young. So as I'm talking to you, you got to have a level of understanding to understand what I'm saying to you. If you don't have that level of understanding, you will never be able to appreciate what I'm saying to you. And that's what Casta, Henry Casta understands. That in order for him to understand the world, not only Costa, to understand the world, the people around you who are intellects, who are intelligent, who are leaders, to understand their realm, you need education. You need to excel. Yes, you can be making all the money. You can be making, have all the groups behind you. You can be sounding so good if you don't have that education to prove that you understand leadership, that you understand the world around you, that you understand the people that you're dealing with and trying to lead. And above all, understanding yourself. You can't lead people. So for a young man like Costa, any educated person got to take off their hats to him. 
that goes the kind of see that he's a product of society. A productive product of our society. And whether you like it or not, you gotta give the man his respect. You gotta give the man what the man deserves. And the man deserves what he did. Let's celebrate Lucasa, okay? So to end my lesson, I'm almost one hour. The review of what I've been telling you in all my lesson is that we got to have responsibilities in our lives. We got to understand that in our society, we are a unique people. We are a unique system from America, from Britain, from France. We are unique in our lifestyles, in our process of socialization, the raising our children, teaching them. What makes us who we are today is our process of socialization, our upbringing, our education, our intermingling, our understanding of the civics of our government and our leadership and what makes us Liberians, what makes us proud to be Liberians, what makes us in it Liberians, knowing our flag, knowing our government, knowing our leadership, knowing our Pledge of Allegiance. Those are the things that are ingrained in us that make us Liberians. Because we have culture, we understand that no nation can be built with our family. That's the foundation of a nation, the family. And if the family is screwed up, the family have no discipline, the family have no leadership, we fail. And the family doesn't have to be the people that born you, no. It doesn't have to be the people that you got blood relationship with. No. It got to be people that fall in their own rule and guidance and system and direction. That's a family. So you don't have to be born with me to be my family. We don't have to share the same blood to be families. No. We have to serve the same ideals the same convictions, the same desires, the same aspirations, the same dreams, then we are family. Because we can be born blood and your own brother can stop you for food, for money, for the dog in the family, for the cat in the family, for the family heirloom. Your own family can kill you for that. Your own blood relative will kill you for little or nothing in their minds because they feel that they deserve more because they care for the family more or they care for the parent more or they care for the dog more or they care for the cat more or they care for the house more or they care for something more. So they, deserve, they see that they have it all. I'm not a judge. I don't judge people. I look at my condition and my relationship to you. If you don't see that I'm a man that don't care about what you got, but what we can share together, what we can do together, then you can't be on my team. You can't be on my team. Because the team is for sharing. The team is about consideration. The team is about understanding that all of us on the team got to go together or we fail as a team. And we can't leave people behind. 
We can't go be a team and think about me, 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 me. I, 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 I. No, you can't be Mr. I, 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 Mr. Me, me, me. No, that's not a team. You fail time and time and time again. A team is bred into a family. A family is like a team. Everybody can be leaders. Everybody can be masters. And we got to choose. We got to choose. Do we want to play on a team or we don't want to play on a team? If we want to play on a team, we'll find a common point with a common ideal. We're leaders who care about us more than themselves, who will put themselves in the us and not try to be ah, 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 me, 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 ah, ah, me, 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 ah, ah, he, me, 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 ah, ah, we can't make it. It's got to be we, it's got to be us. It's got to be we and us and we and us and us and we and we and us and no I, 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 or me, me, me. Oh. That's a lesson for the day. The concept of the whole is better than the ideal of the part, than the greed of the me. So until we reach to that state, where we understand that leadership encompasses more than what I believe in, than what I want to happen, than what I feel. Because it's not about I, it's not about me, it's about us and we. Aluta, continua. My class is done. Have a good day, my people. The struggle continues. Liberia is our only home. Liberia is our only home. We cannot sit and watch Liberia die. Liberia is our home. Liberia is our home. The only home we know. Let's fight to bring it back. Take it from the rocks. Take it from the thieves. Let us punish them. Liberia is our home.